All right, guys, I am super, super unhappy. So these, this is the first time I've had sick fish in like two or three years. Um, I'll explain more about how I keep everything clean between fish and quarantine and all that, but man, I'm so disappointed. Um, so these are my Heterandria formosa. They're extremely hardy fish. Uh, some of the smallest vertebrates in the world. I think they are the seventh smallest uh, The males are and they are adorable hardy fish and I keep them kind of close to my window And I have a ton of like plants in here and they're just cool fish to have they spawn a lot like cr Like crazy they have fun behavior so on and so forth um however I went to Las Vegas to celebrate my birthday and meet my mother um, last weekend. So we were gone for three days and I left the window open. <laughs> Occasionally I open it a little bit to ventilate the room, but only while I'm here. And it was open for 72 hours and San Francisco is getting really cold. We're finally getting fall weather. And these guys probably got stressed out by the rapid temperature change and they all got ick. Uh, so this female you can see is pretty heavily affected. Oh my god, that one especially. So I, I'm really upset. <laughs> However, luckily ick is super easy to treat. Um, I'm sure these guys will clear up really quick. Uh, so I will walk through how I treat ick. Okay, so the first thing anytime you see a sick fish, um, for goodness sakes, handle it last. So I took care of all my other fish first, um, and now I am not going to touch them. <laughs> I am putting towels all over everything, hopefully the water doesn't splash, and immediately after I take care of these sick fish, I'm going to bleach everything that I used uh, with them, and I'm going to probably take a shower, because with my background in microbiology, I'm kind of paranoid like that. <laughs> so always take care of your sick fish last. If you have room, put them in another room. Just completely isolate them. This is the only room I can keep fish in though, so I don't have that option. So I just like bleach everything <laughs> um, and you know, take a shower after I work with sick fish. So second thing is water changes. So I'm going to do a pretty big water change on these fish just to get out you know all the active parasites that are in there ick as it sheds off gets into the water and then infects other fish so I'm just going to do a pretty big water change this is a small tank so it won't take that long at all oh my poor fish and then um, I'll do the next step in treatment okay so I pulled out as much water uh, as I was comfortable with, uh, hopefully taking a lot of parasites with it. Uh, you can see that I prepared new water. So the water these guys are in, let's see, about 70, okay, about 70, okay, 60, 69.970, okay. So I want to heat this up to 80 eventually. However, I don't want to shock them right now. So the water that I'm treating, the clean water, is the exact same temperature as the water in the tank. However, as you can see, I plugged in my heater and I will be transferring the heater and the water into here. Okay. Um, another thing is that uh, this water is heavily salted. So not only did I add water conditioner and make sure that the temperature was correct, Oh, wait, hold on. Sorry, he's saying hi. Hello. He's very curious. I am really nervous to have sick fish this close to my puffer fish because these guys are kind of sensitive, but I have no other outlet. <laughs> so anyway, sorry for the distraction. Um, I added about a teaspoon, like a heaping teaspoon of salt per gallon. This is a 2.5 gallon, so there's about two and a quarter, um, two and a quarter, two and a half um, teaspoons of salt in this water. Okay, so I will transfer it over right now. 
One thing I forgot to add, I only have one bucket. I need to buy a couple more. Um, I want to have a dirty bucket and a clean bucket at all times. And because I'm a germaphobe, I bleach everything every time I use it. So when I use this as the dirty bucket, I went into the sink and bleached everything and then created new water. Okay, so I transferred in the new water. Again, this water is still at 70 degrees, but I also moved the heater. Now if you'll notice, oh my god, this is, ooh, ick. Okay, so you notice red light means that the heater's on. It's got a thermostat, hopefully set at 80 degrees. Okay, I, um, one thing is when you heat up the water that much, like to 80 degrees, these fish are normally not at 80 degrees. Um, I usually just keep them at room temperature. They're perfectly happy in breeding 70, 71, 72 degrees. Um, but because ick, you want to speed up the reproductive cycle so that they fall off and then they like perish in the salted water. These fish are really hardy, so they'll do fine. Um, and so are the plants. Like these plants are like indestructible. So they're going to be a-okay with the heat and the salt. Some plants won't. But anyway, I transferred in the um, heater. It will slowly bring it up to 80 degrees overnight. Um, I added in an air stone because the hotter the water is, the less dissolved oxygen there is in the water. And you can see I strategically placed it underneath the heating element so that there will be really good circulation. Uh, cool water will constantly run by the heater and get heated up. So that's why I put the air stone there to oxygenate the water and to provide enough circulation. So I'm going to move these around so that they feel comfortable in here. I also have some pygmy sunfish in here, some really small babies. So I really want them to survive. Um, I want all of them to survive. So anyway, that's it. We'll see how the fish look like tomorrow. Hopefully some of the ick will have gone down by then. So I'm just going to put my cover on to reduce evaporation like always. And I'll keep my fingers crossed. We'll see. All right, guys, it's just the morning after uh, heating them up and salting them. And as you can see, they look great. I didn't think it was going to happen this fast, actually. Especially the females, I was noticing last night, right before I went to bed, that the females, the large females, seem to be disproportionately affected. But, see, the males are trying to get with them right now. Uh, they're kind of excited. Um, but anyway, yeah, all the females look great. That one, this one in the very middle, she looked terrible last night. I was kind of worried about her and thought about putting her down even. But there's not a speck of ick on her. And I just couldn't be more pleased. <laughs> so this happened overnight, folks. So heating up to 80 degrees and salting the water does work. The fish look great. I'm just going to feed them a little bit. I'm going to keep treating them for another 10 days. That's what they say. <laughs> uh, to just keep them at 80 degrees, I'll do water changes every day or every other day. The ick parasite has been shed off their body and it's now all up in this tank, which is unfortunate because I have a ton of plants in here. I have that beautiful Nubius Petit. My favorite plant in the world is Husvasertang and you can see I have a gazillion pieces of it in here. So I'm just gonna have to keep this at 80 degrees and keep um, just doing fresh water changes, but no medication at all. And the fish look absolutely fantastic, eating well, trying to spawn with one another. Here's a male trying to get with a female. It's a tiny, tiny male in the front. And you can see how much larger the female is in the back. So there's two males trying to get with her, actually. Oh, I'll be... All right, guys, thanks for watching. Hopefully, if you do come down with ick, which I sincerely hope none of your fish do, but if there's like a drastic temperature change, like what happened to me, um, sometimes they might become susceptible to it. Uh, I hope that 
by heating up the water and adding salt, you too can also have fantastic results. So thanks guys. Have a great day.